Hello there, everyone. I apologize about the last episode. There is a problem with it. Spoiler, there's absolutely none of my voice in the episode. Uh, I had some problems with my headset. Uh, I, did, I believe I did a thing clarifying that in the beginning. But then my headset cut out again, which was fantastic, which I don't know exactly why. Uh, actually, Windows Movie Maker did that to me, so I don't really know why. I'm going to probably put some annotations in that, because I feel bad, but what the crap. Uh, so anyway, Mark out of a show, Joe. The days are really starting to heat up. This morning I awoke covered in sweat. By the time the student body cover uh, starts leaving the dorms for breakfast in the morning, duties the sun has taken full effect. Oddly, that puts me in high spirits. Hold on. Oh no. Dang it. It's not, e uh, it's not even eight, yet I feel this day is going to be one of those pleasant, tranquil, warm ones. And hold on, I need to uh, get my phone. If it weren't at the school that considered every absence of class as a sign of a life-threatening situation, I'd consider skipping the whole day and just relaxing in the school gardens. <laughs> yes, today will be genuine, uh, genuinely lazy day. For a second, I stop in mid-stretch and consider the nurse's warning about exercise. Maybe I should have kept up those morning job jogs. Running with someone like Emmy might have been a little testing, but if I worked at my own pace, nah, who am I kidding? I couldn't stick to something like that without some kind of motivation. Excuse me. It's not like I sit around all day. I'll walk to and from the convenience store counts as exercise, right? Especially the walk back up the hill. Yeah, it's no big deal. Compared to months lying in the hospital, I'm getting plenty of exercise. It seems that I'm not alone in my appreciation of the day. Nearly every member of the class is glancing through the window. <sighs> Hold on one second. <clears throat> through the window and into the train, tantalizing the sky. Even the steadfast Chizune seems to lack her usual vigor for schoolwork. Misha, as barren as ever, has even unbuttoned the top button of her shirt and is fanning herself with a notebook. I must be staring now she's sticking her tongue out at me. However, she shows no sign of halting her efforts, nor is she trying to hide the fact. The lunch bell seems to catch everyone by surprise and the class empties at a much slower pace than usual. The heat, the heat seems to be draining the need for everyone to rush. We, well, almost everyone. He, he say Hey there, Hanako. What can I do for you today? Hanako already has a lunch bag in hand. I don't have to be a detective work to work out where this is going. Um, would you like to have lunch with us again? I, I brought enough for everyone. Awesome. You didn't have to be so stiff about it, though. Uh, right. I take it we're going to the tea room? P please. Lily said she'll meet us in there, so we should, 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 should go ahead together. Sounds like a plan. This heat has made me pretty hungry. Hanako breathes a sigh of relief, and I gather my things together. As usual, the aura of the tea room is refreshing, feeling isolated from the rest of the world. Then again, the usual din of the school seems to be a bit stubborn, subdued, most likely from laziness prompted by heat exhaustion. Hanako slowly spreads her food on the table, intently focusing on every little movement, as if she's trying to keep her mind off other thoughts. It's not much, but I can tell from her demeanor that she's prepared everything with utmost care. I guess Lily isn't here yet. Should we start without her? She'll be here soon. Hanako struggles with the lid of a container of rice. Here, let me help you with that. I take the container from Hanako's hand and try to force the lid open. Try as I might, it seems wedged shut. Shut. Let me guess, you put this in while the rice is still hot? Yes, I was in a rush. I put the container on the table between us. I thought so. It looks like it's wedged shut. We'll need some hot water to get it open. But that could be a pain in here. We'd get water everywhere else. Well, in that case, how about I contribute to today's meal? Oh, Lily said that. Uh, at the mo 
At the door, Lily smiles while holding up a bag stocked with various buns and bread rolls. I can't help but do the same. Since you two had a change of had a change of plans because of me, I thought I'd bring a little something. Thanks, Lily. Here, let me get that for you. With a little guidance, Lily's bread assortment joins Hanukkah's riceless <coughs> platter. I hastily make some tea to complete the picture. Well, I'm looking forward to this. Once I take a bite, I notice Hanukkah trying her hardest not to look like she is looking at me. It's nothing special, but then again, I can't really complain. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to cooking for myself. Not bad. I guess this was made with the stuff you bought yesterday? Yes. Hanako's eyes shout at me, beginning for some kind of feedback. Well, it was clearly worth it. Thanks, Hanako. I, I wanted to show you this after yesterday. It's okay. I was just a little surprised at the stuff you were buying. Hanako always liked to experiment when it comes to food. I think it's good most of the time. Lily's smile doesn't waver. The slight change in her tone tells me that things have not gone so well in the past. And it's not like Hanako has many people to sample her cooking. Hang on. Was Lily waiting for me to go first? She didn't start eating until after I said it was alright. Her cheeky grin tells me that this was a deliberate action on her part. I'll have to try and work out how to get one over on her in the future to make up for this. Well, it's good. And that's all that counts, right? Right. Lily, satisfied at not being the first to sample Hanako's creation, begins to consume the food in front of her. I found myself staring as I watched her chopsticks gently touch the plate, her tips delicately poking and tracing to quickly ascertain the position of the food as she dexterously picks it up. One might think she were a child playing with her food, if not for the situation, though she does it with such care and thoughtlessness that it's obvious it was simply how she eats this kind of meal. Not wanting to miss out, I start filling up myself. Hanako takes a different approach, waiting until Lily and I have our hands clear before quickly snatching up her share. Before long, the containers are empty save for the still shut rice container. Thank you, Hanako. That was filling. No, thank you for the bread. Yes, it would have been a disaster if not for that. You're both welcome. But now I must be getting back. It's far too easy to be late after eating here. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think we'll just clean up here and then head off. Well then, good day. Lily leaves her cane tapping away down the quiet hallway. Hanako and I quickly pack our things and stay seated, waiting for the bell. Together we stare out the window and into the en endless azure sky. If it weren't for the pealing of, of the bells, I would have sworn that time had stopped. The urge to skip class rises in my gut. I should have glanced at Hanako, who shows no sign of moving either. Not just yet. The interval between the warning bell and the end of lunch bell passes in the blink of an eye. We really should go. People will freak out and start to search party if we skip. Hanako sighs. You're right. Slowly she rises to her feet, and I follow in suit. Silently, we make our way up the old stairs to the third floor, and then to our classroom. At the door, I take point and open the door ahead of Hanako, bowing my head to- ooh, Bowing my head down an apology in advance. I'm sorry we're late, teacher. I'm greeted not by stern words, nor by an angered instructor, instruction to take my seat, but simply by the silence created by 15 or so students trying not to laugh. Mudo ever tardy has yet to arrive. However, the fact that Hanako and I have arrived together is blatantly obvious. <laughs> <laughs> that makes about 14 students trying and one student fa failing. <laughs> the lovers return. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You can calm down now. I step through the door and realize that Hanako is firmly pressed against my back, hiding herself from the class. With my steps coming closer to my desk, she eventually breaks free and stiffly walks to her own. Her efforts to mentally block everyone's presence from her mind are written clearly, are fairly clearly on her face. Quickly checking the door for any times of the teacher's arrival, I make a trip to Hanako's desk to whisper in her ear. Don't worry about Misha, she's always like this. I enjoyed myself today. Don't sweat it, okay? Hanako nods her head before behind her folded arms, but still doesn't show her face. I yearn to stay and console her more, but Mudo picks up, picks this exact moment to enter the class. Halfway through his lecture, as if 
he started it in the hallway. Which of course is directly proportional to the charge, but inversely proportional to the square of the distance. He's so engrossed in his speech that he doesn't even notice me sneaking back into my seat from Hanako's desk. While Mudo spile, spiel, 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 I think that's supposed to be spiel, but we just, oh, anyway, rambles on, Misha leans over to me. The teacher may not have noticed your tardiness, but I did. That much is obvious from the show you just put on. I have been instructed to let you off the hook for today, but only on one condition. Oh, and what would that be? You have to help us this afternoon. I crane my neck to look over Misha's shoulder. Shizune is conveniently not making eye contact with me. Fine, just for today. I've already told you I'm not joining this, the council, remember? Of course, doing so could be considered, um, considered. She looked down at her notebook, obviously looking for her place in her script. Under duress, and hence would be against regulations. How very strange of you to be considerate of the regulations now. Things should be done by the book. It's just that the book hasn't been written for every situation, so there are times when it can't it can be ignored. And yet you too wonder why no one else wants to be in the student council. After poking her tongue out at me, Misha returns to her workbook and we battle our way through the latter half of the school day. Before I can even stand up, Misha and Shizune have placed their hands on both my shoulders. Hey, I said I'd help out. Damn. This is just insurance. Hiseo, insurance. Hiseo? Hanako timidly tries to leave the room by circling around us. And I suddenly realize that this may be my one chance to escape. Oh, hey Hanako, what's up? Dots. Hey, what makes you think you've got time to chat? Oh, relax, this won't take long. Sorry, Hanako, what were you saying? I I was going to the library and, and I thought Hanako's thumbs dance around each other and her eyes flint around the room, looking everywhere but at us. Sorry, Hanako, but Hiseo has to come with us. He's got work to do. Dots. Oh, but you can help too if you'd like. Um, so how about it, Hiseo? Um... What do you think, Hanako? Or I've done enough work for the council already. Hanako doesn't like people. You hate her friend. You're annoying. I want to go with Hanako. Hanako. Hey, Shizune. I know I said I'd help, but I forgot I already made plans. Besides, helping out more than my share, uh, fair share last week, didn't I? I promise I'll make it up to you some other time. Shizune and Misha release their grip on me and have a long, deep, and silent conversation. Well, you have a point there. To be honest, we we're only going to spend the rest of the budget on cakes. So if you're not there, it works out better. More cakes for us. <laughs> Go away. Hanako. Shizune is about faces and marches out the door, and Misha skips out after her. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Last week, those two were like bloodhounds or prison guards. Or maybe prison guards bred from bloodhounds. I can't believe it. I just thought that let alone saying it out loud, and I think we need to move away from Kenji. Never mind. Anyway, should we go to the library? Sh sure. <laughs> Hanako follows me through the still crowded halls to the library using me as a shield. As soon as we are through the door, Hanako bolts for the counter where Yuko is stacking books. Before I catch up, Hanako has whispered something to her. Um, you'd find that in nonfiction, but I don't know where exactly. If you want, I can look it up. N never mind. Hey Yuko, what's all this about? Oh, he said Hanako's just looking for a book on nothing. <laughs> a book on nothing in the non-fiction section. I I was just I should have glanced at Yuko. She looks like she's about to burst from the pressure of keeping Hanako's request secret. Yuko, what did chess? She's looking for a book on chess. I make a mental note to never entrust Yuko with any important information. Yuko <laughs> I'm sorry, Hanako, it just slipped out. Well, it's not a secret anymore. Come on, I'll give you a hand. I should really brush up on my skills, too. Okay. We could have speared behind the counter. In shame of Hanako, I wandered into the depths of the nonfiction section. I know this is supposed to be a system for categorizing these books, but I don't see how anyone can decipher it without spending half of their life researching it. That's probably why the librarians I know are neurotic. 
Towards the end of the aisle, between a book on card tricks and some book on kids' games, standing a single book bearing the title, Chess Tactics for Champions. Before I can reach it, Hanako has the book in her hands, clutching it over her chest. And, with that... Well, I guess that's yours. Then, mind if I borrow it when you're finished? Okay. With that, we'll end the episode. I'll check to see if this thing has um, my audio in it. And I'm actually going to make a separate save file so that, if need be, I can record this again. I don't want to, but I can. I will make the same choice. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. You don't even know if I have to replay it. Actually, I think you will. No, you won't. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed. And I apologize for any technical difficulties I have. Uh, it probably will be a long time before I can get another headset. So I'm going to have to make do. And I hope no further problems happen. Just one of the headphones like broke off, so now it's just uncomfortable. I'll probably take a picture of it and post it somewhere. I don't know if I'll do that. I'm just kidding. Anyway, I've talked long enough, so I hope you all have a fantastic evening. And as always, I'm going to hit the stop record button right now.